Welcome to today's podcast. We are, as ever, Menon and Howard. On my right here is Anita Menon, and of course, I'm Ron Howard. Today's podcast is going to be slightly different from what we've done before. We've invited, dare I say, an old friend or a good friend of the podcast back again because he was so successful and popular before. He is, of course, the legendary Bob Thacker. How are you today, Bob? Oh, very well. Thank you, Ron. And thank you for having me. I think old is not the appropriate word. A good friend is more appropriate. Good uh, friend, yes. Uh, I'm going to be using the word old quite a lot today. All right. Um, I, I will have to then counter that effectively, of course. Mature. Uh, mature right. That's more like it. Okay. That's more like it. Yeah. Now, of course, Anita is into marketing and Bob is a marketing guru as well. So we're going to discuss today or argue or fight about old school marketing, which is Bob, and the new type of marketing, which is what? The digital type of marketing. The digital type of marketing. So yes. we've got old school or old is gold, as in Bob. Not that I'm saying he's old, he's just mature. And we've got the new kid on the block, which is digitalization okay. or digital marketing. Digital Sorry. marketing. I'm, I'm into neither. Sorry <laughs> to say that. So, so I'm only the moderator. Uh, we're going to promote a lively discussion, I hope. Bob here has got pages and pages of work he's done. And Anita has also worked very hard on her argument. <laughs> So let's see how it goes. Old is gold, Bob. Tell me about why you think traditional marketing is still more important than digital marketing. And while you're going through it, you can join in any time you like. Okay. Go ahead, Bob. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to meet uh, you, Ron, and Anita, of course. Uh, and it's always uh, a pleasure to uh, discuss uh, subjects or topics which are close to my heart. Uh, marketing being one of them. Uh, I'm not a marketing guru. I, I just practice. Uh, I'm a practitioner for more than 30 years of, 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 of that. I any think that makes you a guru. Uh, after well, any entrepreneur years, is. Uh, well, 30, odd, 30 plus years. That's quite a long time. Isn't it is. It? it is. And, and, and uh, as any entrepreneur is, uh, is a marketer at heart, he has to be or she has to be. Uh, well, I, as much as I respect Digital, uh, digital marketing and and and, and, and uh, you know you know uh, Ron that I am quite clued in and I am on quite active on on, on digital platforms. Uh, what I uh, sort can of, we cut there, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay, I'll talk about. Oh, that oh. wasn't even a trick question. No, it's not. A, so, so my my my. So your, your question is is. This. I haven't asked a question yet. Well, you, your so initial point what, is so Okay, far. shall I start again? Go then? ahead. Start again. So, uh, Bob, can you tell us what traditional marketing is, in as you understand it? Well, it's the type of marketing that sort of utilizes the media, the TV, the magazines, the advertising, the business and services. Uh, print is also one of those things which falls under billboards, hoardings, you know, the, the way marketing has been done for so many years. Um, whereas uh, digital being, and I don't want to encroach on Anita's no, don't, expert, don't, don't, don't. expertise, but it's uh, uh, the social media and internet. But a lot of your marketing is personal marketing, isn't it? You're out and about at all these meetings, a poster boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, plug, plug there uh, for them and uh, hoping. But uh, yes, it is. And uh, also business-wise, uh, B2B marketing is more of my, uh, our thrust in our own business is B2B marketing rather than B2C marketing. So um, we use that, uh, we use that uh, quite often. And, uh, and, and uh, that's, where, that's, where, that's where marketing comes in. I don't like to say old style marketing, but I think traditional marketing does come in. So that is word of mouth, that is posters, that yeah. is TV, of, is that? TV is traditional, face-to-face, uh, -to -face, door to door, knocking on door to door, that's traditional as well. So that's a Sounds way. like a lot of hard work. I don't well, know that Anita would do uh, she's that. She's dripping with sarcasm here, so Anita, <laughs> uh, it's not missed on anybody. But um, 
Go ahead and I, and there and there'll be some numbers which will surprise uh, surprise you all. Okay, but uh, tell us why digital would be more important. I think any any kind of marketing that happens on the internet classifies itself as digital marketing. Um, social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, all of these constitute uh, platforms on which digital marketing happens. Um, how do you market your website? Website is also a way to market your brand. Uh, how to make sure that people know that your product and brand is out there. You have uh, search, engine, search engine optimization, which help you get discovered faster. You have Google ads, YouTube ads. So the avenues are just so many and plentiful that it's you're just spoiled for choice. So you get greater exposure for less effort and cost. Absolutely. The reach is tremendous. And uh, these days, more and more brands are inclined to reduce their spend on traditional versus uh, going more for the digital type because they get the bang for their buck, if I may say so myself. That, that's yeah. a strong argument, I have to say, Bob. Well, not so fast, uh, Ron. I think uh, I, I, not, I believe that uh, if, if, if you look at the numbers, uh, there is no doubt that internet is a is is, is a is, it plays a vital role, um, and it, it's a cliche uh, to say that. Uh, my point is very simple, and this is something which I held back before this podcast started because that's supposed to be the punchline. Uh, otherwise, Anita would have been uh, uh, prepared to counter this. <laughs> um, so, what is the internet? For me, it's just one more channel to reach your consumer. Is it a digital channel? Though? It is. Well, it is a digital channel, but it's just one more channel. So you can't disown or you can't ignore the fundamentals of marketing, even whatever platform you may be on. So that's one. The other point I wanted to do was that uh, if you look at the stats, and I know you can say that these are stats from the internet and and whether a digital, digital are. channel, by the way. Yeah, yes, yes, yes the digital <laughs> channel, by the way. Also backed by books, if you want. So I could be in the library of a, a very well reputed university in Bahrain, a British university. I know it well. Uh, yeah, you know that well, and we both know that British well. British University of what? Of Bahrain, of Correct. course. Yes, I know. Uh, which I believe is, is an excellent institution. Uh, by excellent. The way. Uh, uh, some of the and best lecturers out so there. So I was just going to say that. I was just going to put it a bit Where more is this going? <laughs> yeah, so uh, traditional marketing still accounts for some lion's share of advertising revenue, but 56% in 2021, that's for Oberlo. Uh, exponential growth agreed. Digital marketing is growing. Uh, but some more facts, 30% of total ad spend, uh, uh, TV still rules the roost. Uh, 2021, 30% of total ad spend was on, on TV. Uh, let me throw some stats. 71% of the people say they have been consciously engaged by billboards. Uh, radio delivers 12 is to 1 return on investment. Uh, radio as, uh, spend is expected to hit 18 billion. Can, uh, I, can I just yeah. stop you there? So, when uh, you say X percentage were engaged by billboards, yeah. I'm sure they were not people, but they were cows grazing by the side of the highway. Uh, Looking at the billboard, the, the, the number wouldn't include the clouds, the cows, uh, because they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't know what marketing is. But uh, if you look at some of the biggest brands in the world right now, and if you look at Toyota, and if you look at Ken Kentucky, and you look at, and I can name these brands, uh, they use they continue to use traditional marketing tactics with great results. Uh, not only does Toyota, for example, tend to deliver TV commercials, they are also taken their marketing efforts outdoors for sponsoring. Same with Kentucky, keeps its branding fresh. Uh, Cadbury, which is an iconic brand, uh, also uses uh, uh, traditional marketing tactics to build their reputation. Coca-Cola, who would have thought? Uh, Listrin, uh, the, the, the brand uh, from the UK. Nike, which is, of course, the global recognized and I think one of the best marketed brands uh, are there. Right, let me also show you some other stats which about uh, okay. Apple, uh, <laughs> which is, I believe, one of the best marketing companies ever in, yes. in, in the history, more than more than even. Nokia. But they have huge spends on digital. Uh, they also then, have, but they also have huge spends on, on on traditional, uh, on on billboards and then the other ones. Uh, you know, I'll tell placement. you. I'll tell you why. Because in the last two years during the pandemic, where 
nobody was stepping out doing any kind of traditional marketing would have been like such a waste of money because people are not getting out at all who's going to pass by your billboard who's going to pick up a flyer off the street or anywhere it's just not the going to happen the last pandemic happened in 1918 Yeah. The yeah. Spanish flu. The Spanish But there was no inter- internet then. So we have a we have an we have a <laughs> That's true. That's true, bro. There was an, no internet. It's then. an invalid argument. Uh <laughs> the 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 covid was an, is an outlier. So all data which happens so, during covid So but I should, I want to continue my should be should should be taken with a a pinch of salt which i think there's a lot of salt in the sandwich as well but but more than a pinch of salt you cannot take 2 years data for an incident which is an outlier but and say that's the that's the way it is but the thing is all these big brands they were not able to utilize their budget and now they have a surplus of marketing budget which they are splashing out in all a for said uh, traditional side of marketing because they cannot spend enough on digital like already so i think that it's that's just the um uh, outcome of not being able to spend in the last two years so that that's an interesting point but you're saying because of the covid yes companies spent more on digital yes because they didn't have an option for more traditional not only did they have an option but the the compulsions of uh, not being uh, accessing the so customers this was a, it's so good it's, point, it's a, good point so it's, the a, surge, it's an outlier rather than yes but yeah. it is it is a valid point because you're saying that the spends in digital have increased recently primarily because they have too much surplus budget which they don't know what to do with so anita what happens <coughs> when things go back things are getting back to normal and when these these yeah. budgets stabilize they will go back to spending more on digital and less on traditional the which other, is what the trend is the other very powerful argument is uh, again backed by backed by stats is that and i don't want to i don't like to use the word which you, which ron used old but who's spending the money and who's on the social media platforms consumers are uh, young consumers are younger and young consumers, consumers are. are on yes, their phones and, uh, yeah yes they are agree even while they drive yes agree and but who are the actual spenders also Me. young consumers people like ron ron oh, doesn't no, spend anything are, well <laughs> we're talking about me as a, not as an individual but as an example of yes, an age group yeah so <laughs> as an age group the the propensity to spend and with and i don't have to say this another cliche but better health care better better like quality of life so the longevity is increasing and retirees and el- people in that group in the age group of 50 plus who are not so uh, not embracing social but media but that's a very small strata on of the, the society i don't believe, I don't believe so that. the bigger I, generation I would, I would is that the, the younger I, generation show me the numbers, and they Anita. are big i don't have numbers Precisely. unfortunately you don't, i but i can, you have numbers <coughs> you don't have the numbers sentences there yeah No that is about this no. no no I'm, why no. do why you always say that people of my age group are the minority They're not, not. They? on the contrary they are not on the contrary this is the segment which is going to be, which it is very clear it's predominant in one of the second biggest economy in the world or third biggest which is japan which yeah. has got a very high propensity to spend the consumer spends there america is getting old europe is getting old uh, japan is getting what old. about china and india yes that, these are, yeah. they have the biggest youngest population Granted, that is available uh, china is going to have a so, challenge of its own let's not go to their demography which is highly skewed Um, uh, India is getting young. Turkey, Middle East is and young. Agreed. I, I totally so agree with you. So all of these have very high in internet but, penetration rates. But rate. who has the propens? Who has the power to spend? Me, my it's age. People group. Like, it's people like it's people like Ron. Ron. Just, let me, just let me turn this a little. No, bit. I'm just looking at you as oh, someone don't. representing that age group. You know, so yeah, I don't think my, that age group actually likes to spend so much. It is the younger generation we that love, wants shinier, sparkly things, and they want to buy the latest Nikes. We love expensive holidays. You yeah. would not buy the latest Nikes. You would not no, buy the. No, that's true. That's he would pay for he it. He would not go and buy but the latest would, uh, buy it, trendy uh, outfit but from he Sheen. Would, but he, he would wouldn't. pay for it. Uh, ad spend <laughs> surges in UK. Nielsen ad intelligent characters TV as the linchpin of media economy rebounded 20% last year. Uh, hey, I'm not saying that this is Nielsen, so this is not some. Uh, Uh, uh what's the word which was a uh, uh, some sort of uncorroborated data this is nielsen uh who's nielsen it's a <laughs> big company that does Maybe these studies if i asked you for the top 10 accounting companies in the world i would be I'm able pretty to tell sure you. you would be able, i've heard of wpp no? yes but uh, not nielsen maybe our listeners are, have never not heard of this 
Nielsen is Nielsen is yeah. pretty reputed. So yeah. uh, 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 you're supposed to be neutral. I'm just asking you who it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a new. It needs to be a data uh, collecting, collecting agency, agency, and they put out these an- uh, analysis. Right. Like so, out. so there is definitely a a, a, a a big chunk of the money which goes still into this traditional marketing, and you cannot forget those fundamentals. However, whatever technology comes into okay. play, you're still using the okay, fundamentals let's just, of marketing. Let's just put this data aside for a bit because I still feel Excuse that me, data is everything. We can't put data agree. aside. Completely agree, but Thank I still you. feel it's a it's because they were not able to spend enough in the in the last two years, and that's why there's a surge in the traditional side of marketing. This is my opinion, but let's go to the actual merits of traditional versus. Digital. Yes, the merit. It's not just the cost, is it? What's the result? Yes. Uh, How effective or? is a particular channel this for is, a brand? Uh, this is a predictable question, so I came prepared with that. Uh, I don't need we, to we prepare. We like to be predictable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even but, need to be prepared. Uh, see. So yes, uh, go ahead. Floor is yours. So I think that uh, a digital media is available to brands for it provides it a very high reach. it provides it the benefit of engaging its consumers and keeping them engaged uh, there is a possibility of a call to action on every media that you put out in uh, in the digital world where people can respond to it which is not available in tv advertising it's not available in billboards or a flyer or a book or anything that's printed which is actually something tangible that you hold in your hand right so that call to action that ability to engage your consumers or potential customers is something that traditional media cannot and will not be able to provide what traditional media <clears throat> does provide is credibility uh social media tends to come uh, there is more trust on the traditional media than there would be on the social media you research the entire thing on the internet where is the lack of credibility there oh uh, i didn't say that i researched it. again internet is a medium but my data is pretty traditional and I'm, i'm quoting you Quoting you, companies who have done their research. Uh, granted that there is uh, that so social media is uh, is there. Uh, don't forget what traditional can do for you uh, directly to an audience is familiar, so established. You said uh, that there is credibility in traditional me- media, and you are perpetuating that uh, it's not there on digital media. The credibility is low. It's lower. I didn't say it's low. It's lower. So if Nike People is putting, yeah. if Nike is putting out uh, an ad there yeah. on the internet, yeah. let's say on Facebook or Instagram, yeah. Yeah. vis-a-vis a billboard, you think a billboard has more credibility over the same ad being I posted? I think per se, traditional marketing would be more convincing, uh, more credibility than. I don't agree with that at all. Okay. And I don't know that. So I, I'll ask you <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> How do you market your business? Uh, so yes, uh, B two B is uh, again a uh, a place where uh, again digital. I'm not denying that it's not there, but traditional marketing still stands in this part of the world. Face to face, direct knocking on the doors, direct mailers, uh, print, broadcast, telemarketing, traditional ways you of reaching. You do all that. We we do we it, just beside yes we do very little print uh, because I think that's not suited for our business, but right. we do. uh we do direct mail we do telemarketing we do knocking on the door we have face to face sales guys yes, meeting yes, going to going and meeting customers um but we, if have you ever tried digital marketing before um you know yes, assuming that traditional is the only way to go for no we never uh, <coughs> assume uh, we first of all we don't assume uh, you know what assume does right means that should never assume it should never assume because what it does is mix in yeah as of you and me which i don't know whether i don't know whether we can use but you that said it anyway i said it anyway so you might use it means what's going to happen uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, by the way it's something which i use a lot with my students but i'm very careful to erase it from the from the white board uh, so yes uh, we use it and we do we do use uh, and what has been the effectiveness of it well in our in our business b2b maybe it's our nature of the business maybe it is still uh the 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 market we are catering to it is still traditional which wins out in our business i'm talking now my own business i'm sharing my experiences i'm not saying right or wrong i'm just saying this is what it is but do you think you did the best that you can with the digital media that was available to you um 
we we did not go to a professional agency like say yours which you're trying to get to that i, I think i could i could see that thing coming uh, but yes there's some marketing there is some marketing here uh, and don't forget it's direct marketing direct face to face it's not right through any internet channel uh, but uh, uh, we have used uh, most of these uh, most of these tools as we call it i just call them tools uh, a carpenter has many tools. A carpenter 100 years back was using different tools than what he's using now. So marketer uses different tools or his or, his or his disposal. So I've asked you that question. Yes. It's only fair that I yes, ask the same course. question to Which Anita. was? How, how do you market your business other than digital? Other than digital? Honestly, see, I have a brick and mortar set up myself. I have a lady salon. Um, where we provide products and services to ladies. Um, I do not use any form of traditional marketing at all. At all. I've, from day one since I uh, bought the salon, and it's been five years now, we've only used digital media to promote the brand. Do you think traditional marketing would have helped your brand? Or? I think uh, for a smaller setup like mine, it would just add on to the cost and would not let me measure how effective that traditional media was for my brand, but which is clearly possible with a digital uh, media. You I, can measure the effectiveness. As you meet people, you do tell them about your salon, right? Yes, I do. Isn't that traditional marketing? Word of mouth. And, uh... and then I give them the Instagram account link. <laughs> Okay, you also would give them, tell your customers, <laughs> hey, you come back again, we give you some sort of a free service, which is traditional marketing in your in your marketing company where you would be selling your or offering your services to corporates. It would not be no corporate is going to use a digital marketing agency till they meet the person behind it face to face and and actually interact. Uh, you can't deny that, that, you know, that's that's traditional marketing at its best networking and selling it, uh, selling your personality, selling your skills before you actually sell the product. If I were to split that in percentage wise over the five years, how much I've used my own influence to get people to the salon yeah. versus how much I've spent on Instagram and Facebook and the website, I think it would be a good 80, 20, 80 being digital and 20 being my own personal influence because in the last five years, it's only last or the year before that that people got to know that i'm the owner of the salon before that people didn't even know about it okay. yes so right it's impressive do you have an instagram account yes we do have an instagram account it's not like we live in the, in the cave so speak up, speak uh, up. You know, yes we do have an <laughs> instagram account absolutely yeah and do you use it a lot uh we do use it to communicate but we haven't had any business uh generated from there um is it because we not use it effectively? I think we know some of the tools. The nature of B2B businesses, of our office supplies, people are not going to be buying because of, uh, they see an ad, they'd probably buy, or, or an offer, they'd probably buy because of network, because of relationship, because of, they can depend on something. And, and the other thing, that's that's my, that's my, which which I'm sure Anita, I'll concede to you, it, it's an advantage for social media, but I'll, I'll also take the flip side of it. Social media can project you or your business much more effective, large, scale-wise than a traditional business can, which is, I think, I believe, quite quite a bit misleading. You would see, and I'm saying for your particular business, you would see uh, maybe a hole-in-the-wall operation with two people and being extremely active on social media. And you would think, oh, wow, what an operation this is. Sleek marketing doesn't mean good business practices. Uh, but know. that goes, to, it's true for traditional as well. If they have that kind of spend and money and they do the traditional marketing in a way, they show something that's not really there, then that's just their ethics, which are not in well, the right direction. Yes. Uh, I, I, if you if you bring Kotler in here, who's the guru of marketing, means you know, marketing is ultimately what the creative use of truth. Uh, so yes, that applies to both. Uh, I think the truth tends to get a bit stretched on social media a bit more than on, 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 on traditional media. I think uh, a brand story can be 
more creatively and effectively told on social media than on any other platform this is what i feel so i have to say despite <laughs> her lack of preparation bob she's given a good run for you for her money on this one uh, yeah you you've come with almost an encyclopedia of papers and anita's got five lines she's no it's just two. given better than she's got so uh, i'm not sure who, who's won here okay um, but i think we could i'm not concluding yet but i think we come to a a message here that there's a place for both yes oh absolutely and i think the best analogy would be uh, if you take uh, if you take social media as a trophy wife and what <laughs> and, and, and traditional media as as the as the uh, the old the uh, established, <laughs> old guy established guy who's got some money who can pay and for the trophy wow. and also pay for social media yeah. this conversation would have existed only because there are two men and that's why this conversation I, happened otherwise I, it would not happen i think it's sexual or it is it's, uh, it is um, <laughs> I think we can cut that word out but it's it is discriminatory trophy wives are a fact well, we have a lady here we have talking a about a new type of marketing right? yes. yes and the old is gold here yeah but you I gave think, as good as you got yes because i live my truth every day i mean this is what i do for a living and uh, i've seen how we've grown brands uh, putting the right strategy at work uh, minimizing sp marketing spends so they can spend on other things well maybe bob if you're still around in 5 to 10 years <laughs> you might be arguing for digital uh i probably would if I if i'm if i'm uh, there hopefully i am around oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but but to sum it up uh, in a, the the short answer would be what is better i would say it depends yes uh, the longer answer would be of course that you know that it's it's the best option that we have a blend uh, we do not totally abandon uh, uh, what traditional marketing says what the values are and what what they stand for uh, we obviously can have a, a nice sort of a hybrid model where we use both of these effectively yes uh, we could also then use um, uh, depending on the business uh, it would be that some businesses like like anita mentioned her her saloon business would be majority digital but there would be some businesses where majority of the spend would be uh, especially on b2b and large industrial products uh, would be more on traditional way of of, of doing it I means who would buy an engineering part based on an ad in the social media you would really be skeptical well so there you go so you could probably be so you can say depends and you can say uh, what product it is what business it is what markets you're operating in and so on and so forth well it's not not a decision between one or the other is it it's a combination it is, it's a combination i was just it being depends on your budget advocate. so it's not a zero sum game as well but yeah, i'd like to think what the audience believe as to whether if this was a competition or a boxing match mm -hmm. who i think won? they complement each other who traditionally won? yes you complement each yeah. other but bob i have to say that she put up a good fight there i think she's come come out on top with point winning on points there oh, uh, uh, i would really? i would yeah. i would, oh. uh, I would I'm sorry bob. i would no, dispute it's okay bob and you don't win every time <laughs> there's no prize or anything it's okay I just, just i a just sandwich. give her this on points I'm, i'm sorry to say well i think this is biased the decision is to, is to be disputed and contested <laughs> and the headlines next uh, or next day would be Anita wins on on uh, not technical points but on on bias. On bias. Well, it should be because she's my partner in this. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I risk my case. You would be asking for a rematch, wouldn't you? I would definitely ask for a rematch, but But on uh, some other topic. On some other topic. Yeah. Think entrepreneurship would be a good way. Well, to we've talked about that last time. We all we all like we're entrepreneurs, so we uh, only I'm have I'm not. Oh yeah. No, I'm you quite are happy too. to be an employee. You are, you are an entrepreneur. But alone. that's a different subject. So that was interesting for me. I hope it was interesting for you. What I did forget to talk about and I don't know how the advertise costa is it digital or is it uh, uh, original? Mostly digital. But I'm back to costa and it's English breakfast tea. Congratulations wow. finally. Well, good to, good on you and uh, well thank you for having me. I quite enjoyed it. Well, I have to come back Bob because you've lost this. Congratulations to Anita. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Um yes thanks for coming. I should not sulk. Uh, Don't sulk. <laughs> you have a sandwich. I have a sandwich. <laughs>
from come, Costa. Come back with yeah. another subject that you think you can. Uh, yeah, but this is fun. Be fun. Yeah. Uh, I think this is where you can tell the audience where they can find us. Yes, so you can find us on Instagram at mhconsultants underscore bh, and this podcast will be put on our YouTube channel, which is MH Consultants. Make sure you subscribe. We are very close to being hundred or more than hundred. Yeah, really. ninety-eight now. Yes. So we really need you guys to subscribe so that you never miss a podcast from us. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. And move when it comes to onboarding, when it comes to employing, when it comes to buying equipment. Because when you when you hire somebody, you need to have a PC for him. Yes. Okay, you need to have the right infrastructure for him. So you cannot wait for 60 days, you know, to get the approval from, you know, mm. Tim Keen to get so. So over the past, um, I would say eight months, we have invested more than 150,000 dinars. Okay, when it comes to buying equipment, when it comes to, because, you know, um, we, we've decided to insource all our marketing setup. Okay. okay. And it's buying this sort of equipment is not, it's not cheap, it's, it's yes. expensive. Yes. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to, you know, receive that support from Tamkeen because we cannot wait, mm -hmm. you know, for, for a decision that will come after 60 days. Right. The other most important challenge is, is the, I would say the, uh, the infrastructure of entrepreneurship in Bahrain. Okay. Um, uh, we as a company, uh, it took us 12 months to start. Hmm. Okay, so in 12 months, we don't have revenues. Okay, now we started having revenues. Mm -hmm. We've hired Bahrainis, but Bahrainis, they need to buy a car. They need to buy a credit, a credit card, okay? Now, we encourage banks to look at those small businesses and try to support the employees of these businesses because if you look at the the structure of the economy 70 percent okay of the business are based on smes mm, yes. so so we we would encourage banks to support uh, the retention of the bahraini employees in the smes and how do you support that through providing them with the right facilities when they need it okay, okay. so this is very very critical for us I think you've really um, come up with uh, excellent points. Uh, it's not a criticism of the system. It's just that there is always something that can be improved to support the existing uh, structure. So, I mean, very, very valid points. Um, there's one last question I'd like to ask you about when you started this app, did you, ha did you have a reference point? Did you benchmark yourself against anything that's out there in the world? Yeah, uh, we, we could not design the app without looking at certain case studies. True. Okay, so we have looked at some regional case studies. Okay. Okay. Uh, and international case studies. These case studies uh, give you information about the user's experience. Yeah. Okay. How to make sure that the user's experience in the app is optimal. Right. Okay. And you also the that's we, that's the UX side, what we call it users experience, mm. and then also the UI side. Okay, mm. the I would say the interface. Yeah. Okay, how how the the page looks like. Mm. Okay, the uh, the sizes of the buttons. Okay, the colors. Okay, all of these are very important. Mm -hmm. So from a design perspective, yes, we have looked at a number of. Um, case studies. We have also looked at a number of case studies when it comes to the financial modeling. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we looked at the annual reports of international uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked at their financials. Okay. How long would it take? How long would it take for these um, companies to break even? Okay. The sort of you know cash flow that you know the sort of business can generate okay um, the, the sort of indicators or the key performance indicators 
so yes we have we have seen a number of you know we have done extensive research around these international uh, platforms okay okay so i mean yeah that's that's amazing i think uh, there are a lot of other apps that i was also researching when i was looking at you and uh, i think there's a lot 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 more a super app can do and i'm sure you're heading that in that direction eventually you would be heading there uh, at the right time um sure. so with this i think um i think i've had a very enriching session Absolutely, with you Absolutely yes. Uh knowing more about your app and knowing that you have your sights you know set really high and i'm sure that you're going to do very very well with you um and we really wish you all the best as mh consultants. Thank you thank you very much. I I I highly appreciate having me with you today. Yes th- thank you for coming. I could see you very well organized. You've thought it out. You have a a plan and I think yes. it's important to have a proper plan isn't it absolutely and that absolutely. builds confidence uh, for anybody who's watching the podcast in your brand you know what you're doing yes. and that's really important um, so thank you again Mr. Thank Dr. Adam it's my pleasure thank you very much thank you thank so you. Anita tell everybody where they can find us on YouTube oh yes so oh I kind of missed that part <laughs> So, uh, well, this podcast will be aired very soon. But uh, meanwhile, you can, uh, you know, for all the updates, follow us on Instagram at mhconsultants underscore vh. Uh, otherwise, you can go and refer to all the previous podcasts of ours at uh, MH Consultants on YouTube. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much.